online community worship this week. This is our anniversary Sunday. It's the 57th anniversary of the United Church building in this space in Lewisport. And so we're filming in the sanctuary today, a chance to see the place that many of us have missed for so long. We're gathering in God's sanctuary here, the church. This is the building in which we gather to, give, to build strength and hope, faith together. And they've done that for 57 years. And so we celebrate this week, our special Sunday, recognizing the power of looking back and moving forward. As we consider the past and the future, we also take time for the announcements, which are part of our present. This week's online service is sponsored in loving memory of Jean Koch, who died February 1st, 2020, from Betty and Derek White and Barry, Sarah, and Matthew Koch. Thank you to our sponsors for recognizing the importance of reaching into hearts and homes. If you would like to sponsor our online ministry in memory of a loved one, in celebration of a special event, in gratitude to God, or for any other reason, please call Christine at the office, 535-2629, by Wednesday. Sunday School Zoom, Sunday at 6 p.m. This week, we're each baking a chocolate coconut mug cake to celebrate the anniversary. Contact Rev Steph for Zoom details to join us. Adults are welcome. I mean, who wouldn't want to learn how to make a chocolate coconut mug cake? Showing forth the beauty of our stained glass windows, we are reminded that the light of Christ shines in us, through us, and all around us. For God is always with us. Thanks be to God. about the discipline of looking back in Romans 15, 4 to 6. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had so that with one mind and one voice, you may glorify God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We look back to learn, to gain endurance and encouragement so that we can look forward with unity and hope. Let us worship the God of our past, present, and future. Let us pray. Loving and everlasting God, Thank you for this opportunity for the church to gather. Though we can't be physically in our building, we are the church beyond these walls. And we're celebrating the church on the Lewisport Pastoral Church. We're celebrating the people and the vision and the hope that has been here over the years looking back for encouragement and strength, looking forward for vision 
and unity. God, as we celebrate, we recognize that wherever we are, we are one in Christ. And we pray that as members of your body, your Holy Spirit would knit us together in the bonds of love. You have promised that you are the one that would build your church. And we ask that you would continue to equip each of us, both individually and corporately, with the talents and gifts that may be used to your praise and glory for the edification of the rest of the saints of God. Protect us from the evil that seeks to destroy and causes divisions among your body. Help us to be sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, and gentle towards one another. Let us not be motivated by selfishness, but in humility may we seek to regard the needs and necessity of others before our own. For God, that is what the church is for when we follow the example of the compassionate Christ. Give wisdom to the leaders in this congregation. Give wisdom to those that teach and a teachable spirit to those that listen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. is a little bit different because we would usually gather on anniversary weekend. We'd have a potluck lunch or something. We would have the UCW tea. Uh, we would have a musical evening. There are many things that we've done to celebrate anniversaries over the years. And this is the first anniversary that we celebrate with COVID protocols in place. And so, there's not a crowd gathering in this physical place. But when I came into the sanctuary, I took pictures of the plaques that I could find. The plaques with people's names on them. For instance, this pulpit itself was given to the glory of God in the memory of parents by Mr. and Mrs. Mac Freak. I have a number of names that I would like to read for us. As we see the plaques or hear the names, we will remember that our momentum for being the church comes because we stand on the shoulders of our past. We stand on the shoulders of the saints who have gone before us. These are just a few of the plaques that we found and the names that we remember. To the glory of God and the memory of YPU, Young People's Union, our gallant dead from World War I and II, Harry and Helen Starks, Evelyn Elizabeth Ruth and Joan, maiden name Budden, Robert Bob Wolfrey, E. H. March, AOTS as one that serves men's club. Mr. and Mrs. Headley Powell, Mr. and Mrs. Daw White, Doug Perry, Eli and Phoebe Ann Rowe. 
We take our place in the legacy of this church and the ministry that is offered here. And we see by recognizing the people that we celebrate that each of us can make a difference in the faith of this church, in the growth of the Spirit of God in this place, and in the future that is to come as we all gain strength, energy, excitement, and motivation for an anniversary service where we look behind and reach ahead. We've all missed our choir music this year, and so here are two archived pieces to share, one from the senior choir and one from the male choir. scripture reader is Harold Manuel. Harold has been on boards within the church at all different levels here on the pastoral charge with our presbyteries and districts as they've changed in name 
and as a member of the General Counsel Executive. He's been working on boards in the church for 65 years. That's commitment. That's dedication. He's been a gift with his financial wisdom, not just to this congregation, but also to the wider church. And so we're grateful to have him read scripture for us as we recognize this anniversary this year. Be merciful to me, O oh God, because of your constant love. Because of your great mercy, wipe away my sins. Wash away all my evil and make me clean from my sin. I recognize my faults. I am always conscious of my sins. I have sinned against you, only against you, and done what you consider, what you consider evil. So you are right in judging me. You are justified in condemning me. I have been evil from the day I was born. From the time I was conceived, I have been sinful. S sincerity and truth are what you require. Fill my mind with your wisdom. Remove my sin and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear the sounds of joy and gladness. And though you have crushed me and broken me, I will be happy once again. Close your eyes to my sins and wipe away all my evil. Create a pure heart in me, O God, and put a new and loyal spirit in me. Do not banish me from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Give me again the joy that comes from your salvation and make me willing to obey you. John chapter 12, verses 20 to 33. Some Greeks seek Jesus. Some Greeks were among those who had gone to Jerusalem to worship during the festival. They went to Philip, he was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. <clears throat> Philip went and told Andrew, and the two of them went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has now come for the Son of Man to receive great glory. I am telling you the truth. A grain of wheat remains no more than a single grain unless it is dropped into the ground and dies. If it does die, then it produces many grains. Whoever loves his own life will lose it. Whoever hates his own life in this world will keep it from for life eternal. Whoever wants to serve me must follow me so that my servant will be with me where I am, and my Father will honor anyone who serves me. Jesus speaks about his death. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? <clears throat> shall I say, Father, do not let this hour come upon me? But that is why I came, so that I might go through this hour of suffering. Father, bring glory to your name. Then a voice spoke from heaven, I have brought glory to it, and I will do it again. The crowd standing there heard the voice, and some of them said it was thunder, but others said an angel spoke to him. But Jesus said to them, It was not for my sake that this voice spoke, but for yours. Now is the time for this world to be judged. Now the ruler of this world will be overthrown. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. In saying this, 
He again indicated the kind of death that he was going to suffer, the Word of God. As we celebrate an anniversary service, we usually have a special guest speaker, and this year it was supposed to be Sid Wolfrey. However, he's been in the hospital a lot in the last few months, most recently having a couple of heart surgeries as recent as last week. So though he wanted to be here, either in person or online, he sends his greetings and prayers instead. And we continue to pray for him as he recovers. It's yet one more unexpected change in tradition in a year full of unexpected events. As we celebrate this week, we gain a new energy for the ministry that's here when we look back at what's been. And we gain a new enthusiasm for what the church can continue to accomplish, especially when we recognize what we've weathered this past year. The goodness, the blessings, the lessons will stay with us and we will take them into the future because of this year of lockdowns and isolation. However, it is recent history to be put alongside the stories of St. Matthew's United Church here in Lewisport over 57 years. This one is a unique story for the history books we haven't been able to gather in person to celebrate God's presence like we normally would. But celebrate we do. We celebrate when we gather online, on porches, on the phone. We celebrate when we care for our neighbor, the one who's lonely, the ones who are grieving loved ones who were lost during this time of 2020 and didn't get to properly grieve and say goodbye. When we recognize and take care of our neighbors, we're celebrating God's presence through service and love. As we remember what has been, what is happening now, and what can come from all of it, we will know deep in our hearts that God was here. God continues to be here and God will always be here in the midst and ministry of the Lewisport pastoral charge. 57 years ago, people in this congregation and the leaders of this church planted a seed of hope as they erected this building to the glory of God. They planted their dreams of a congregation that would continue to thrive and grow in spirit and love, reaching out to bring the peace, justice, and compassion of Jesus to the community and world. 
In our passage of scripture that Harold read for us, Jesus reminds us that planting a seed is an act of promise, rebellion, and new life. But that new life does not come before the death of the seed. To plant a seed is rebellion because it stands in the way of land that is empty and barren, but it refuses to leave it that way. Kind of like the saying, God finds us where we are, but doesn't leave us there. Breaking ground and scarring the earth is an act of defiance that leads to grace as the flower breaks ground with a shoot of strength and courage. But Jesus wasn't simply creating a picture of pretty flowers and lovely scenes. He wasn't just speaking of apple seeds and sunflowers. Jesus was talking about the danger and death of the seed before faith can flourish. He was talking about his own death and resurrection. Life is not always a party or celebration. It can be pretty messy and dark. It can feel like our sides are splitting in laughter or like broken bones thrusting through skin. Jesus was the seed that was to be planted And he was facing the most difficult and painful days of his life. In the hands of his enemies, he would break and die. And then miraculously, that broken and dead body would transform into the risen Christ who offers abundant, everlasting life to all. The heart-wrenching psalm read today, the most poignant confession in scripture, was written by King David after he was confronted by the prophet Nathan, about his adultery with Bathsheba, and then his killing of her husband in war to cover the secret. The king thought he was above the law, even above God's, but when he faced what he had done, when he confessed to God, his spirit was crushed and broken. He realized his crime, and in his confession, his will died and he transformed into a man after God's own heart. 57 years ago, when the churches and Sunday schools were bursting at the seams, planting the dreams of a new building was far less risky than it would be now. But there were still challenges, no doubt. No matter how practical an idea seems, there's always division and arguing. We're often... Us Christians, the family of God, were often our own worst enemies. As much as we pray for unity and compassion, there's always friction within the family of God. Not just with a new building project, but throughout 57 years of trying to live God's dream together. If there isn't enough pride and selfishness or many interpretations of what needs to be done, we can always count on money to provide seeds of discontent. With all of the destructive characteristics that surface, there should be enough fertilizer to coax those seeds of hope and harmony to flourish into plants that rise high out of the dark bitterness of people's pride. As God provided the necessities of life after death for Jesus, God also tends over us as we celebrate life in all its fullness. That's the good news. As God provided the necessities of life after death for Jesus, God also tends over us as we celebrate life in all its fullness. Through baptism, this church has been planting seeds of unconditional love and promise to be faithful supporters and encouragers of children and their families and for adults who choose to make a public profession of faith. By nurturing the young minds and hearts and giving strength to faith in adults and action, we can watch the Spirit grow in them and us. At the communion table in the sanctuary and at the folding tables in the hall, we gather around food, feeding the body and filling the soul celebrating God's presence and nurturing each other. 
even in the pain of dying to self and transforming ever more into the likeness of Christ, may the seeds of your faith send up shoots of hope and blossoms of grace, giving opportunity to spread the beautiful colors and fragrances of God, offering new hope to a def- desperate world. May it be so. Amen. When we come to give our offerings during the anniversary service, we often recognize a special gift in order to celebrate the work that has been done in the past and to fuel the ministry that's coming in our future. And so when we come from the congregation, gathered in this space or in cyberspace as we are, we come in the spirit to offer our gifts to fund the ministry that happens by the church, the ministry that has happened for 57 years and will continue on to enliven the spirit and to share the compassion of God in this place for years to come. We celebrate with our praise and our thanksgiving as we give our offering this week. thank you for the many gifts that have been given over 57 years in this place. Thank you for the offerings that come to show you our gratitude and our praise. Thank you for the offerings that come because we can use them in your service, listening for your guidance and wisdom to know who needs to be supported by your love and your ministry. God, as we offer our money and our talents and our time, we make a priority for our life, a priority that sets you above all, reminding us that you, the creator, have created us to be generous and kind and compassionate, just like you. God, we thank you for all that is given in your name and all that the church can do with the gifts that you multiply for us to use in your service. Thank you, God, for this and all our years. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
as we move forward into this year. Let us reaffirm our faith as we say together the new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. go back into the world to love and serve God and God's people, just as people have left this space for 57 years. We go out rooted in the rich soil of God's love, God who plants, revives, nurtures, and sustains us. We are within God's loving care. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 